It's a privilege to be joined on the summit today by head coach Logan Quinn, who is the lead man for the Southern Arkansas University Mule Riders men's basketball team. Coach, congratulations. First, we will not bury the lead. You all took the tournament championship for the Great American Conference men's basketball tournament 2023 edition. First tournament championship for the program there since being a part of the GAC. Congratulations on that first. Thank you. You know, I'm I'm just so proud of our players and and coaches that put so much into this. And, you know, Coach Reynolds does an incredible job with our guys and in every aspect with giving them confidence with our current players, with always being on the recruiting trail. Um, huge, huge credit goes to Coach uh, Pippins, who's a GA for us, um, who's played at the Division One level and the, the Division Two level. Um, so everything that he does for our program is so valuable. Um, Coach Ted Waller, who's our volunteer assistant, helps out so, so much with our current players and the encouragement that he gives and and the, the knowledge that he has um, over many, many years of, of watching basketball and coaching basketball. Um, I'm just so proud of our whole program, our whole team um, for sticking to it um, and for for becoming champions. Coach, an 89-69 victory over Arkansas Tech in the championship game. And it looked like you really saved your best for last for the weekend, a four-point victory over Oklahoma Baptist, and then uh, a three-point victory over Henderson State. Tough games back-to-back there. And and you all become the first number two seed to take the tournament title, too. I don't know if you're aware of that, but it was a, a big win all the way around. I know there were lots of firsts for you all and for for everyone in that. Brock Schreiner, the tournament MVP, averaged 15 points a game for the Mule Riders, which uh, says a lot. I know over the course of the tournament, you all talked about him stepping up. He talked about stepping up his game. He's averaged 6.7 points per game for the season coming in, 15 points per game, and just a brilliant effort. It was awesome to see Brock finally be able to, to, to play like the guy that we recruited. Um, you know, he's coming from a Division II program um, that he had the ball in his hands a lot. Um, he shot it a, a ton um, with some really good success. And, you know, when we were recruiting him, we made it really clear that he's going to have players around him that can that can get it done at a high level. Um, and he just said, Coach, I just want to win. And so, um, you know, I was hoping that we would win at a high level. Uh, And I told him that we would. Um, But to see him, obviously, in Shawnee, Oklahoma, he's from Choctaw, Oklahoma, to see his family in the stands um, and for him to do what he did, you know, nobody was surprised. I wasn't surprised. Coach Reynolds wasn't surprised. Our entire team wasn't surprised because they see that guy in practice. And he hasn't been able to get it going. He's had some games in conference, some games out of conference where – um, he's played well, but the majority of games, he's really been a distributor. He's an awesome, awesome leader. He's a great person, great character. And so sometimes he gets a little bit too passive because he's got guys around him that can make plays. And, you know, we talked about a week before we went to the tournament and he sat right here behind me and we watched film. And I just said, Brock, how can I help you be the guy that, that we recruited? And he said, Coach, you know, here's a couple things that that can help me, but also I need to just take it upon myself to go do it. And um, so we had a couple buzzwords between me and him where, hey, I need you to go get it done. And um, he did it at a really, really high level. He got his confidence back. He was able to make his open threes, which he had missed a few in a row leading up to, to the conference tournament, but he had shot it really, really well in practice. And then when when he was able to get to the rim and make plays at the rim, he's a really good passer, like I said. But when he, when we have Brock be able to score it, and when he can be another double digit scorer for our team, I think we're really hard to guard, um, especially when he can shoot the three. So you know, again, that gives us another element of a guy that can get it done at the offensive end. And then he took some really really big charges down the stretch that were huge for us. So I'm just so proud for for Brock, for his family, for him to be tournament MVP. Um, you know, he would tell you that it doesn't. It's a it's a team award and and it's a team trophy and all that stuff. But 
but deep down I knew he wanted to play well. So for him to go out there and play well in Oklahoma was awesome to see. And when his name was announced that he was the tournament MVP, his team celebrated with him just like he'd won the lottery. And it, it was fantastic to see that. You talk about team. There were a number of other players from the Mule Riders team that got all tournament recognition, including Latraven Black, as well as Blake Rogers, Gregory Hammond Jr. I know it was a team effort, but uh, they they did well, and they, they all seemed to excel this past weekend. Yeah, they, they really played well together, and I feel like that's what we've done all year is guys just really like playing for each other. And I said at the beginning, you know, you don't really know what team you have, especially when you have nine new guys – but after watching them play, we just, you know, took two weeks and they just played five on five. Um, after seeing them in the weight room, the energy and effort that they gave in the weight room at the beginning of the season, I said, like, look, fellas, we, we may not have, you know, one, two, three guys that are going to be on first team all conference. We may not have that, but I know we can have a really good team. And if we can buy into, you know, everybody eats from night to night, if we can buy into – you know, one night it might be Chris's night, one night it might be Blake's night, one night it might be Jerry's night, one night it might be Trey's night, then we can have a really good team and we can gel together. And I think we got stronger through the four-game stretch that we lost. We lost four in a row, and our guys didn't blink, and that's a credit to their character because we tried to get guys in here that had really good character but could also get it done on the defensive end as well as the offensive end. And, you know, us being able to gel together was awesome to see throughout the year, especially in the tough games. Um, we had so many come from behind wins where guys just kept saying like, like, Hey, it, it may be your turn and I'm not playing that well. I'm going to, I'm just going to go offensive rebound or oh, I'm shooting it. Well, Hey, get in the paint and find me because I'm going to knock it down um, to hear that in the huddle where you just kind of, as a coach, you can just kind of be quiet for a second and listen to them talk. It's pretty awesome. We're speaking now with Logan Quinn, who is in his first season as the head coach, head men's basketball coach at Southern Arkansas, and we appreciate you watching today. Please subscribe to the channel, share this video, like it. We would uh, we would like that a lot. We talk about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond here on Midwest Sportsnet. And, Coach, uh, what you did was uh, earn a trip to the NCAA tournament. You got the automatic bid from the Great American Conference, and you'll be playing not that long from now. Um, an interesting uh, interesting matchup as it is. You drew the number eight seed in the central region. That means that you get to take on the number two team in the country, Northwest Missouri in Maryville, Missouri. On top of that is there's the host team in the region. So talk about that. It's not just a tournament game. It's actually a true road game. It is. It is. You know, we felt like it was a true road game. Our first round game against Oklahoma Baptist in Shawnee, a couple miles from their campus. Um, so, you know, who knows? It may have prepared us a little bit. I don't know if anybody could be super prepared for what we're going to see uh, in the tournament in the first round against Northwest Mo because they're going to pack it out. I think they call it Title Town, um, and it should be called that. Um, you know, Coach McCollum does an awesome, awesome job. There's a reason why he's been National Coach of the Year multiple, multiple times. There's a reason why they've been the national champions year in and year out at, at our level. Um, so we definitely, definitely have our hands full. Um, you know, we're, we're going to, we're going to really, really dive into it. Coach Reynolds and I and coach Pippins have, have already started. And, and I know our guys are going to be really ready to play in the NCAA tournament. You know, it's what we all work for. Um, and so I know we're going to come out and, and we're going to give our best shot. Um, I know we're going to really, really be connected and be tough. We're going to try to use our toughness. Um, we're going to try to, we're going to try to really, really stay connected throughout 40 minutes because, you know, in the games that they've won, especially, especially at home, um, teams are able to hang around a little bit and then they go, they've got spurt ability because they play at home in front of that crowd and they're able to go on 10 nothing runs, 15 nothing runs before you can even look up. So we're going to try to limit their runs as much as we possibly can. Um, but I know that we're going to be connected and I know we're going to be tough. Um, so hopefully, hopefully we can play to the best of our ability and against a really, really good team. I mean, they've been ranked number one or number two in the country throughout the year for a reason. Um, so we've got a healthy respect for them and for what their coaching staff does. Coach, I know that there has not been a whole lot of time to reflect, and, and obviously that won't take place 
for another two or three weeks or, or longer, depending upon your postseason run and, and uh, when it actually does come to an end. But considering this, 22 wins, that is the most wins for Southern Arkansas in the Division II era. 22-9 and nine right now for the season and, and uh, 15 wins in conference play. That also was a high in, in GAC play. So there are a number of things already this season. Milestones have all been hitting a long way. And I'm sure you're aware of some of those, but, but talk about what that means. You know, it, it means a lot. It, it really does. The, the, the Southern Arkansas University program, even going back to the NAIA days, they, they've had really, really good players. Um, some players that we're now recruiting their sons, which is pretty cool. Um, we've, we've got, we've got a, a former player who played here um, that his son is now coming to play for us, which is awesome. Um, and so we've had a rich tradition when we when we went to um, when we went to NCAA Division Two, we've struggled a little bit. But I, I think I said this after our game when we were cutting down the net, and then I said it with Dan on the radio. If if it wasn't for Andy Sharp, if it wasn't for Coach Sharp and the foundation that he laid for this program, we would not be sitting at 22 win, wins right now. And you know, for him to be able to set that foundation over the 10 years that he was here with David Anderson as his assistant. And then for me to, to, to come here, for him to trust me enough to hire me four years ago, um, for him to trust me enough to, to promote me to associate head coach, um, it meant the world to me, but also the, the foundation that was laid for the culture. Um, we're, we're just trying to continue that. And um, I, I can't speak enough about the person that, that Andy is and the coach that he is. Um, so a, a lot of what you see is, is based around what we've done together, Andy and I, and, and then what he did before I even got here. And so obviously there's going to be a, a, a few wrinkles and, and twists and turns in the culture and a little bit how we recruit, a little bit how we coach. Um, but at the foundation, it's, it's a lot of the same things. And, and we want to recruit high character dudes um, that can get it done on the defensive end first and foremost, um, but that also can can go in transition and fly in transition and make good decisions and be athletic. Um, so that's kind of what what our culture is. And we, we can't necessarily get the highest profile recruit at Southern Arkansas, but we want to develop them and we want to develop them on the floor. We want to develop them in their lives, in their personal lives and um, you know, we, we get people coming through our office a lot, and this is just a testament to our guys about, you know, how awesome they are with their character and how respectful they are to people. And that just kind of makes the whole year when you can have multiple people come up to you and talk to you about your guys. Um, and so hopefully we can continue to do that. Yes, 22 wins is awesome. Um, being able to go to the NCAA tournament for the second time in three years is awesome. Um, being able to get 15 wins in an incredibly tough league that has great, great coaches. Um, you know, our first round game against coaching against Jason Aker. I mean, they've been to the NCAA tournament multiple times since he's been there. Um, playing in the in the second round game, um, you know, they've they've had an incredible, incredible run. Um, playing in the championship game against against Arkansas Tech and, and Coach Mark Downey, who's been to NCAA tournaments everywhere he's been. Um, Coach Elgis, you know, Henderson, that that was an incredible fight. He does an incredible job with, with his guys. DJ, his assistant, does a great job. We always see him out on the recruiting trail grinding. So um, to be able to to just coach in those games against those type of coaches and, and for us to be able to compete with our guys against their guys, it's really just an honor because – I think the Great American Conference is probably the most physical athletic conference in the country. We're not as, as skilled as the MIAA probably or, or the or the NSIC, um, but I think we're the most physical and athletic conference. And so, you know, I'll take I'll take our top two or three teams against the top two or three teams in the NSIC and MIAA. And so, we're going to be able to hopefully show that in the first round. Um, I know we'll be tough, um, and hopefully we play well. Well, Coach, it's, 
you have your yeah. opportunity. It, it lays before you for the second time in three years, as you mentioned. The Southern Arkansas Mule Riders are going to be dancing in the NCAA tournament. Tip time is 6 p.m. Saturday, March 11th from Maryville, Missouri. And again, Southern Arkansas taking on the top seed in the region. A brutal, brutal central region, as it always is, and the number two team in the country, Northwest Missouri State. Coach Logan Quinn, again, congratulations on a fantastic tournament run, and the season continues for you. Thank you for taking time with us today here on the Summit. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Joey, for all you did throughout that, throughout that tournament. It was awesome. Thank you, sir.